Hello, my friends. Welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in on one photo raw, which is just ridiculously good. I love this product. I haven't done a video in a while, and I was like, man, I really want to get a on one video done because I love the product. I like to share it with you folks. And frankly, there's just so much you can do. It's incredibly complete and comprehensive, and I love it. So um, I've been using it for a while and making videos for a while, and I'm going to keep doing that. But one of the things I realized was I was kind of doing, I was kind of making some mistakes. Let's just put it that way. Now, um, mistakes is probably in air quotes because editing is a personal choice. Everything about it, I'm of the opinion that if you like it, then that's the right thing for you to do to that photo because this is art. And if you can't do art the way you want to do art, like what's the point? You know what I mean? So mistakes is not a judgmental kind of word this is an air quotes and this is me examining my own workflow to be super specific about it but these are things that i considered that might have been mistakes that i could have done better if i'd paid attention a or b done these up front or c even knew they existed to be honest so let me walk through that here's a photo from copenhagen in 2015 shot with an olympus camera raw file format in the old days, I used to just jump into tone and color and start editing and things like that. But here's the first kind of mistake, and that is not using no noise AI. Now, that's a relatively new addition to On One, but it's incredibly powerful, it's super useful. And on Olympus RAW files from seven years ago, micro four third sensor, this is a little bit lower light. They just, you know, they, uh, they had some noise. Uh, so if you zoom in, you can see already this, I haven't done nothing to this raw file and it's already improved. I mean, it's sharper and crisper where you want it to be in these buildings. It's smoother and noise free where you want it to be, which is the sky. And so I might actually take the detail down a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, but I love the color and luminance noise reduction that's happened here and just the overall improvement to my raw file is frankly significant so that's the first thing is pay attention to that and if you're going to use noise reduction use it up front because in the past i used to think well i'll just do it at the end after i've done all my edits i really think it's better to just go ahead and get it done up front especially with no noise ai now being built in it works so well on raw files as you can see here so that is mistake number one that i used to make not doing that first now mistake number two is the thing right below it which is lens correction and i didn't always take advantage of this because either I would just go in and do some things manually if I wanted to, which you can do and you have all that control here, but there are so many lens and camera profiles built in here where you can come in, you can see, I mean, look at this list. That's just the Olympus lenses. I mean, that's massive and I had nowhere near that many Olympus lenses kind of getting close on Sony these days. But the point is so many different options that it's well worth coming in here and exploring to see what works for you. I did shoot this with my 12 to 40, which you can see up here, the F 2.8 Pro, and it did pick up that profile automatically and applied it to the photo. That's wonderful and awesome. You've also got color fringing in here. And of course you have these manual corrections right here if you wanna adjust distortion additionally or independently of the lens profile. Uh, but that's a big deal and it really helps fix those verticals because the distortion is kinda of out of whack. If you look at that, it's kinda of got some of that barrel distortion where it's kinda of bulging out a little bit. And when I apply that, that just straightens it out so much nicer. So that's a mistake number two is not using lens corrections. Now mistake number three is also right here in the develop tab. There's so much in develop. I mean, you could spend days just talking about all the different capabilities just in the develop tab. But the next one is transform. I used to never do this. And it was such a miss on my part because look at those verticals. I mean, wide angle lens, a little bit from a distance. And guess what? It looks like the buildings are leaning back. Well, the wonderful thing is you have this keystone capability built in. So you click on that and you get these lines. And basically what you do is you can grab these corners and just move things around in order to get the lines kind of lined up. So basically it'll fix the verticals. Let me show you kind of what I'm talking about. I'm going to grab this top circle here at that corner and I'm going to drag this and what I'm looking to do is make sure this line on the right hand side of this little square lines up straight on anything that I can find that's a straight line in the picture and so what I'm doing is trying to get that as straight as possible in terms of the picture itself right obviously the line that I'm using is tilted but I'm tilted the same as the line in the photo that's on that building and so what I'm doing is 
is giving on one information. I'm saying, hey, this picture, this line right here, um, I'm lining it up with something that's straight in the photo, meaning that should be straight. And so you go and you do that. I'm going to go over here and do it as well. And on this side, I've got pretty good, you know, uh, pretty good lines, especially in architecture. You often have these kind of lines. So I've got that. I think that looks pretty good. Now notice my top is crooked. You want to make sure that's straight because otherwise it's going to tilt the picture based on you telling it that that line uh, should be straight, which uh, it's not currently straight. So let me just get that as straight as I can. And then the bottom, I want to get straight as well. Uh, the beautiful thing, again, about cityscapes and architecture is you kind of got lines everywhere. Um, Basically, once you're done and you've lined it all up, you can just hit the apply button or you can hit the enter key and it'll go ahead and fix those verticals for you. And hey, lo and behold, my photo is straight. The verticals are fixed and frankly, it looks good. Now, I actually, I think I'm going to go in and slightly adjust it. So if you click Keystone again, it's going to bring you back to where you were with uh, what you've already lined up. So if you need to do some minor tweaks, you're not starting over, you just pick up where you left off. I'm gonna fix this a little bit and then jump back into it. Okay, I think I have it looking the way I want it to look. I also dragged this vertical slider to slightly fix a few things. So let me show you before and after transform. There it is before. You can see it's obviously leaning back a bit, which happens all the time with wide angle lenses and architecture. And now I think it looks a lot better. I also decided just to drag this scale slider a little bit, and that's basically, well, let me show you the scale slider. If I take that back to zero, you can kind of see there it is, and I think I was at two. So I'm pretty happy, but there's one thing to be aware of when you use this, and that is you end up with some kind of dead space that's on the sides, like it might actually turn black because it's had to adjust the verticals, but it doesn't recreate the photo uh, edges or anything like that for you. So usually after transform, I go into crop and make any additional adjustments that I need to in order to get the frame looking just right. I'm gonna go ahead and crop it now. Okay, so there it is post crop and I think it's looking pretty good. So, so far, no noise AI to get rid of the noise in my image and to create a little bit sharper image overall. Lens correction to take out some of that distortion and of course, keystoning in order to fix the verticals. And I haven't even edited the photo. To me, these are corrections. These are not enhancements or edits. And so I've been able to take the photo from that to that. Now that doesn't take into consideration the crop or anything like that, but I'm now ready to edit. And this is the next thing that I wanted to be uh, kind of mentioned as a potential mistake. And that it, and I'm kind of a little bit surprised I'm going to say this, but I've learned to love this tool. And that is AI auto. When I first started using it, I'd click on it and I was always like, oh, I don't really like that. Ugh. So I didn't use it for a long time, but now I'm starting to get to where I actually do like it. I mean, it does a pretty good job, especially on slightly darker photos like this one. It's doing a pretty good job of bringing that image back for me and, uh, you know, adjusting and, and basically moving the light around for me. Now you can see once you click it, it does all these various things to the sliders here and the light section, as well as down here in the temperature and tint. I typically go in and further refine that in order to get it looking uh, just the way I want it to look. But for me, AI auto is a great place to start on a lot of images. It doesn't work on every photo for me, but it works on a lot. It's a great place to start, big time saver. And it kind of gets my uh, base photo kind of set so that I can say, all right, I want to do a little bit of this or a little bit of that, which is what I'm going to go do now is just further refine some of the distribution of light in this photo in order to kind of get closer to my vision for this image. Okay, there's my refined version after making some additional adjustments. I pretty much moved contrast and highlight significantly, a bit of midtones and shadows work, also some temperature and tint adjustments, and a little bit of vibrance as well. So now I'm able to take the photo from that to that. So it's a lot closer to realizing my vision. And AI Auto, for me, was a good starting point. It's rare that I'll click it and say, I'm done. In fact, that's probably never happened, but I am starting to use it as a starting point now, and I think it's saving me some time. Okay, and now usually what I do from here is go into effects or local adjustments and apply some different things, you know, filters, tools, whatever you want to call them in order to get the look that I want. But here's another mistake, uh, you know, again, mistake. And this is an idea that um, I use from time to time. I don't use this on every image, but it's something that I'm starting to embrace a little bit more. And that is using presets. 
because with this one, I'm like, all right, I've got a sunset. I know I kind of want to amp up the colors. I know I want it to be kind of a, a little bit prettier, a little bit more intense sunset, but not over the top. But I'm not really always sure. I'm like, well, do I want to do this or that? Presets is a great way to shop around, for lack of a better word. And you get to those down here at the bottom left menu. Just click on that. And the nice thing is there's a lot of different presets built in. And so I went into the golden autumn category simply because it looks kind of cool. And I clicked on this G6. Now you can see that's obviously as a preset applying across the entire photo. I'm going to go ahead and close that preset menu. And I like some of the colors. I don't like everything about it. And so this is where I want to go in and refine the preset. Now, in order to do that, I go over to the effects tab, which is where the components of the preset are displayed. There's dynamic contrast and there's channel mixer. Well, if you've been here before, you know, dynamic contrast adds a little bit of crunch, or if you use it negatively, it adds some smoothing, but channel mixer is obviously affecting the color here. So if I look at dynamic contrast, there it is before that. And there it is with it. I've got to be honest. I don't like it. So, I'm going to take it off. You can just delete that filter and hey, guess what? I'm just left with channel mixer, which is really what I was looking for. I was looking for a color adjustment, not necessarily anything with dynamic contrast. So if I turn this off, there's my original sunset and I am doing a bit of a creative color implementation here in case you couldn't tell. Um, but with channel mixer, I really like that, but it's a little too much. It's a very much kind of a orange and teal, which I do like, but it doesn't look great across the entire photo. I kind of like it more in the sky. And so this is where I go in and I use the preset as a starting point, much like I did with AI auto over on the develop tab. But over here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to build this uh, luminosity mask in order to apply it just to the brighter parts of the photo, which is really going to be mostly the sky. So luminosity mask is built automatically. If I click view, you can kind of see that darker in the buildings, which is means less implementation of this uh, filter and brighter in the sky, which means more of it. Now you can do things to adjust the intensity or the uh, application of that mask by using these different sliders. I'm not going to get into that right now in this video, but I like it better with a luminosity mask and I've also got an opacity slider here. And so I like to come in and just say, Hey, I'm going to take this down to about a 75 and I basically slightly lowered the intensity some more. So preset as a starting point gave me a nice color look, but it was a little too much deleted the dynamic contrast because I didn't want it or even need it. I felt like I just wanted the color pop that was in there. So that's channel mixer that's left luminosity mask to apply it mostly to the highlights and take it out of the buildings in the foreground because it was a little too much. And then after the luminosity mask, reduce the opacity of that filter. I was going to say preset, but the preset is two filters really. And now we're just down to one. So it's really just a filter. So there it is before channel mixer. And there it is now slight bump in color, slight change in color tones, but I like the overall look. I think it's a soft, subtle, nice implementation of this, uh, this look on this photo. Now, those are my five mistakes you know, again, in air quotes, but those are the five mistakes I've made. There's one other thing, call this a bonus tip. And that is I like to go into local adjustments and I've done this in multiple videos in the past, but I go over here, I invert the mask so that it applies to the entire photo. I just reset that exposure to zero. So basically it's all white, which means whatever I do here is going to go across the entire photo. And this is like a touch up for me. People ask me, why don't you just go back to develop and further change that? And the answer is, I like what I did in develop and I don't know if I'm going to like what I do here. And I don't want to forget those settings because I spent a little time on them. I used AI auto and then I did a bunch of refinements. That's to me, that's like locked in place. I don't want to change it, but local adjustment is kind of like having develop again. So I'm going to come over here. And what I ended up experimenting with was adding a little bit more contrast just to pop that image a little bit, pulling down the highlights a little, just to pull back a little bit in that sky. I was at a high 20s here, like maybe 27 or 28. And then midtones, I increased those a little bit. That does increase the brightness of the overall photo, but it is obviously mo mostly focused on the midtones, which a lot of that is in the foreground. So maybe like a 12 or something like that. It's giving me a bit more visibility into the foreground here. It felt like it was a little bit dark. So if I turn this off, you can see before and of course 
after. And that's my final image, my friends. This is all about five basic mistakes that are easy to skip, it, simply because like me, I jump in, I'm like, I wanna edit, I got a cool photo, I got a nice sunset, I wanna make it pop. But when I slow down and focus on you know, fixing these mistakes, I do my no noise AI first, I do lens correction to make sure I'm taking care of that, I do any keystone that's necessary, I use AI auto to kind of get me going in the right direction with the light distribution, and then of course I refine it, and then I come in, sometimes with a preset to give me a specific color look, but I customize it. I might remove components of the preset, like I took away dynamic contrast, and then I apply it with just a luminosity mask and reduce the opacity. So much power and control, and that's why I said at the beginning of the video, the product, it, it's amazing. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, and I mean that as a compliment. It's ridiculous, like how much stuff you can do. So powerful, so much fun. That's how it works. If you enjoyed this video, my friends, I really think you're gonna like that on one video as well, so check that one out next. And until then, my friends, I'll be back as soon as I can with another on one video, but you guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, my friends, adios.